Hello, my name is Kendrick. I'm known as Technology Interpreters, and welcome to my channel, where I walk you through the basics of hacking and cybersecurity in very simple and easy to understand terms. Also, respond to comments, so please leave comments and questions, and drop a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if this is helpful to you. So I'm going to get you started. So the first thing, let's go ahead and change over. And what I want to point out here is that if you're looking at my screen, Hack the Box Meow. If you don't know how to get connected to Hack the Box. Meow is a server that shows you how to do it. And my previous video walks you through every aspect of getting connected to hack the box. Okay. I also have other videos helping you to set up your virtual environment, your virtual machines, etc. All this is on my, on my channel. If you need any assistance. Okay. So just go through my previous videos, but in the meantime, we're on hack the boss fawn today. We're going to learn about file transfer and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and show you some details here. Some important things you need to note. So number one, some questions I received is like there's a guide for these like this starting point series okay so if you look under labs you'll see where it says starting point that's where we are and these are the servers that are listed on the starting point and on the right hand side where it says open walkthrough this is where you find the pdf file that has the instructions and all the details and lots of very good information about how to complete the hack okay so let's jump into it once you do that you want to connect to the vpn once again my previous video shows you how to do that you then want to spawn the machine. Mine is already spawned, so this is up and running, so I can reset it and stop it if I need to. Uh, and you do that, re the reset button is there in case for some reason you have issues with the server and you break it while trying to hack it, you reset it to kind of get it back to normal. So we're not gonna address the questions yet. So now that you know where that's at, let's look at the guide, okay? And I've got this open in a separate tab, and so, it basically walks you through this information and it's talking about client client is typically referred to as that's going to be your workstation, your computer, not a server. A server is something that like delivers services. Okay. To someone. So it may a web server, a file server, a print server. These are devices that really are not for like just the average one person, but they're really there to serve multiple people. Okay. And they're usually somewhere in a secure data center or something like that. So what it's showing is that basically we're going to be transferring data to the server and transferring data from the server. Okay. And receiving data. And so it goes into some details and it talks about there's ways to do it. FTP is a program or there are many FTP programs that use the FTP protocol. If you don't understand protocols, take a few seconds and just Google protocols and start reading up on this. Okay. Cause you're going to need to build that foundation in order to do that. But the bottom line is FTP programs come in many shapes and sizes and types. Some are command line, some are actually GUI or have an interface that you can just click buttons. Really convenient. So in this scenario, what is showing here is that we're the client and we're connecting to the server using ports. And the ports are very difficult to explain for somebody if you have no experience in this. But just to kind of sum it up, one server can have one IP address but it has 65,535 different ports that you can communicate with it. And the way this works is because a different service, like different services use different ports. So for instance, zero through 65, five through five, there are some ports that are what's called well-known ports and you'll hear this on tests, okay? And basically those are ports that are for services that are very common. And this FTP or file transfer protocol is usually on port 21. All right, and you're seeing that basically as our client, we're connecting to the server using port 21, using the FTP program, and we're able to transfer data to the server. Now what it also is illustrating here is that FTP by itself is not secure. So if I were an attacker, I can do what's called a man in the middle attack. If I had some way of basically plugging into a networking device and being able to like monitor that traffic, then I could actually intercept that traffic. And so what it's showing here is FTP uses port 21. It is unsecured. This is also a test item. So keep that in mind for future reference. Now it's also showing what's called SSH or secure shell, which is actually secure. It's encrypted. And so it's showing that attacker is trying to intercept that traffic, even if he's connected to a network device, trying to monitor that traffic because it's encrypted, that the attacker can't intercept that traffic. So that's what they're illustrating there. And then there's also what's called SFTP, secure FTP, which uses port 22, the same as SSH. Okay. So they both use the same port, but 
FTP is for transferring files. SSH is more for connecting to a device and being able to type in commands and connecting to a terminal to do different things, okay? Remote management is a good example. This is exactly what SSH is typically used for. Remote management of servers, switches, etc. okay? FTP is for send, uploading files, downloading files. And so secure FTP, the attacker is unsuccessful in, in being able to snoop on the traffic. So now we get to the fun part. We get to do what's called enumeration. So one of the things you want to pay attention to is your IP address, 10.129.1.4. That's our target device, okay? So what we're gonna do, the first thing is we're gonna do the ping command. Control shift V to paste that, what I just typed. And so that's ping. So what I'm doing is basically, I'm sending a little data packet to the server and saying, hey, are you there? The server's like, yo, I'm here and it's sending a reply back to me. And so that's a basic way of being able to identify that what you're attacking is actually connected to the internet and working. Now, sometimes the device can be connected, but it won't respond to pings for security reasons or other reasons. They may have ping, like ping replies turned off because they don't want to let you know their device is connected. Okay, so that's a good security thing. So now what we want to do is we want to do what's called an nmap command. So nmap, and then nmap stands for network mapper. And what we're doing is we're going to like, remember I told you all those ports, 65,535, that's also a test items. All of those ports, we want to scan those ports and want to see what's there. Now, the thing is, the command we're going to run today is a basic command. It scans the popular ports, so it runs a lot faster for this exercise. But we can run this program and scan all 65,535 ports, which is what's recommended when you're hacking, because you don't want to miss anything, because you never know what port may reveal something that's interesting. And in hacking, the word interesting means good stuff. That means something we can possibly exploit. Okay. So we're going to run the impact of pseudo, by the way, we need to run pseudo. And what pseudo allows us to do, it allows me, even though I may not be the administrator, I can run the command with administrator privileges without being the administrator. Okay. So this is a security feature on Linux. So I need to do the pseudo command and then I need to do that IP address. We're going to do in, uh, pseudo in map, sorry, in map and control shift V to paste the IP address. It's gonna ask for the password, which is Kali by default. And once again, I do all my exercise on Kali Link. So you can see this was super fast. So what it's showing us is that port 21 is open, but it doesn't really tell us like what version of the software. Cause it really would be helpful because guess what? FTP can have many different versions and many different software. And so in order to exploit it, we need to know more information. We need to know what version of the software to know if there's a vulnerability available. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the up arrow on our keyboard. We're gonna bring up the last command and we're gonna put a minus lowercase s, uppercase v. What that tells us is that we want the version of the FTTP software that's there. And now look at this, we have the, the port, but it says open and we have VSFTP 3.0.3. So we can go to play places like exploit db which is right here in the browser and we can actually search that version here to see if their vulnerabilities exist yes there's a database that shows a list of vulnerabilities how cool is that all right so on to the next part of exercise so now we want to get a foothold but we want to use the ftp command by default it's not installed i haven't installed because i've already run this let's just make sure yeah see it's already installed so I'm going to exit out of that, okay? So that being the case, what you wanna do is run a sudo apt install ftp minus y. When you run that command, everything goes good. You should see exactly what they're seeing here and you should have the ftp command installed. Once it's installed, you wanna do the ftp minus h command to get help. It gives you all the different information and you can see it's better formatted there. I just got it really big so you can see what I'm typing here. But it shows you all the different commands that you can use with FTP. So FTP space minus four space IP address, et cetera. Okay, that's kind of how, and it gives you the, how the syntax or how you should type the commands. These can be hard to read. I can assure you if you're new to this and you see this, this is like blowing up your ears right now, blowing your mind. 
They're like, what the freak does this mean? But this is simply showing you, you type FTP and minus, and then you can use any combination or all of these commands <laughs> uh, on the right side. So minus four, it's minus six, minus P. You can do that. And then you can do a minus N with this. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so we won't go with that minus O to output means basically you're going to send your results. So you can do a minus O space. And then I believe just put the file location and it will output the results of your FTP um, or out of the transfer to a particular location. Don't hold me to that. <laughs> I'm going to skip all this other stuff because I don't want to make this a video about FTP, but we're going to keep it simple for now. So that's just giving you the help commands, but I do want to give you some additional context. So now let's FTP to the server. So FTP control shift. You remember you copy that and I press that. Now, many servers have the option to allow anonymous FTP. It's not recommended, but for some reason, if you just want to give, I guess maybe generic files, like you've got the security server secured, and you need people just to be able to go there and have read only access and download files, maybe. Uh, but you don't find a lot of anonymous FTP stuff, at least I don't these days. OK, so now that we're on the server, we're going to type anonymous as a test. OK, and when we do that. It asks for a password. Well, when you do anonymous connections to an FTP server, the password is irrelevant. OK. So I'm going to type anything. See, it says type of nine, one, two, three. I'm just going to type anything in the term and boom, I'll successfully connect it. Cause when you do anonymous connection, the password is ignored. You just type something there and it'll let you go by. So now that we're there, so we're connected to the server. This is a Unix server. And so it has its own command. So we can type help here as the way of finding out what the FTP commands are. Okay. And so when we type that, look at that. Like, okay, and it's better formatted over here. These are options. We can type ls, which is the Linux command to listen and look with that. Then in hacking or these hack the box series, you're always trying to find the flag.txt or the root.txt or the user.txt. Typically, it's going to be user.txt or root.txt. Okay, man. So user flag is the one where you like have compromised the account of a particular user that's not the administrator. The root.txt is mean you have found a way to elevate your permissions on that server or device to become an administrator and you completely own everything. You can do everything on the device because you're the administrator. So in this case, we've got that. So now how do we get this flag? Well, FTP has two processes that you need to know about. One is a get, which is to download files from the remote server to your machine and the put command P U T as in PUT, which is to put files from your computer onto the server, but you have to have permissions to do so. But in this situation, we can do a git flag.txt, press enter, and it's going to download the flag to the directory of where we started when we first ran the FTP flow program. We might have been in downloads, we might have been in the home directory. We'll find out in just a second. So now that we have that flag, we can go and we can look at the flag. So I'm going to open up a new tab and let's find it. Okay. So let's see that we put it here up. Oh, there's flag.txt. Let me look at downloads just to make sure I didn't put it there. So looks like we launched the FTP program from the PWD from the home slash Cali directory. PWD, by the way, is, is print working directory and allows you to see where you currently are like what file, what folder you're currently in on the server. It's very helpful, especially when hacking. So now that we can see the flag.txt, do ls right there, see it right there. So now we want to look at it. So what you do is you use the Unix cat command, C-A-T, F-A-G, flag.txt, and it will actually display the contents of the file that you downloaded. So once you've done that, you want to do Control, Shift, and C on your keyboard, or Command, Shift, and C on Mac, then go to hack the box and we can place the flag at the end. So now before we do that though, let's answer these questions. Okay. Cause you got to answer these questions to own the box. What does the three letter acronym FTP stand for? Answer is file transfer protocol. Okay. What communication model does FTP arch architecture architecturally use? Uh, it is a client server 
something client server what the client server model okay i forgot i'm i'm glad i'm showing this because you know the thing is you have to answer a specific way so i, I typically would have just like if they put client server and they require you put model but you have to put model there all right what is the name of a popular ft gui ftp program I'm just going to let you know what that one is filezilla is one of the most popular ones out there I've been using it for years so very important which port is the FTP service acted on? It's 21 is the port, 21 TCP. So TCP is the protocol. <laughs> Wait, yeah. So 21, I, mean, I don't know. I just literally confused myself just then. So sorry about that. Uh, but yes, it's T port 21 using TCP. You also have UDP, UDP. you have multiple uh, other protocols that you can use, okay? Um, the next one, let's see what acronym is used for a secure version of, of FTP. Remember I told you about SFTP, secure FTP. That's the answer there. All right, what command can we use to test our connection to target? Ping, we can use the ping command. For your scans, what version is FTP running on a target? Okay, so we remember we looked at this. We ran the nmap scan. Let's see if we can find it here. All right, so when we did the nmap minus sv to show the version number it came back with version sf vsftp 3.0.3 okay and we ran this command all right so let's go and show that looks good got it okay and from the scans what os type is running on the target so that should also be in here when we did that version control os type is unix it's right there and see, once again, when we just ran this other command, we didn't, the, the basic command, it didn't give us very much, okay? So just run the nmap without the sv, the version command. We don't even know the operating system, but using the version command, sv, right there highlighted in purple, we know that this is a Unix server, okay? And then finally, here's where you put the flag. We've already copied the flag. You just basically paste it in here and click submit. I've already done it. I can't do it again. And uh, congratulations, uh, 17 minutes, you just hacked your second box. If this video was helpful, please don't forget to drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for like very in-depth and simple cybersecurity tutorials. Thanks for watching.